Hello, everybody. Welcome to International Podcast Day 2017. Make sure everybody's using hashtag International Podcast Day to celebrate our day, the celebration and the power of podcast. Well, on this hour, we have Am Amanda Kendall from Australia. Amanda, how are you tonight? I'm very well, thank you. And of course, for me, it's tomorrow. So I'm speaking to you from the future. From, from the future. Sunny, sunny Saturday afternoon in Perth. Well, good. Good for you. I wish I was there. I have I have some podcasting buddies. Obviously, you are on that list now from Australia. So I'd like to make that visit one day. Um, so Amanda, you do the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. You're you're an Australian travel uh, lover, blogger, and podcaster. Um, after starting um, NotABallerina.com travel blog in 2016, uh, she launched into uh, the podcasting space with the Thoughtful Travel Podcast in March in 2016. Amanda spent uh, time living in Japan. Slovakia, Germany, and has traveled widely. And uh, a big goal is to help others realize all the amazing benefits of travel for self-development, improving international relations, and so much more. So Amanda, in a few minutes, I'll let you get going. First, I do want to thank every sponsor of International Podcast Day 2017. First, Blueberry is a full-service podcasting company, a turnkey solution that will allow a new or veteran podcaster to get set up and running within minutes. Pay them a visit at blueberry.com. Studio 21 Podcast Cafe is a working cafe with two working podcasting and video casting studios. The grand opening happens September 30th, where they'll be broadcasting live throughout the day. Head over to studio21podcast.cafe for more. And The Messenger is a podcast documentary is a journey through the modern world of podcasting, uncovering the magic behind why podcasters do what they do. Get your copy of The Messengers in iTunes and on Amazon by visiting themessengersdoc.com. And finally, thank you to, to Potable. Looking for your next favorite podcast? Potable revolutionizes podcast discovery by providing podcast recommendations tailored to you. Start by going to play.potable.co. That's play.podible.co. And finally, thanks to our bronze sponsors, the Audacity Podcast, Modern Life Podcast Network, and Podbean. Well, with that, Amanda, we really look forward to your contribution to International Podcast Day. Thank you so much for joining the stream. No worries. It's great to be here. Uh, as I said, it's a sunny day in Perth over here, but I have to excuse myself for being a little bit uh, fluey. It's the end of winter here in Australia, so I've just had the flu all week. Um, but uh, excuse me if I uh, cough or splutter a little bit. I'm going to do my best to get through the hour. So um, as um, we mentioned, I have been podcasting for about 18 months now. Uh, it's sprung out of my travel blog, which is 12 years old. So um, it's uh, some, something I've been wanting to do for a long time. and. Uh, the title of uh, what I'm going to talk about today is why podcasting is the most fun thing I do. Um, and I, I should exclude a couple of things from the most fun thing I do because my, my seven-year-old son heard me say that and he said, well, but I thought playing Lego with me was the most fun thing you do. And I said, yes, yes, of course, I mean for work. So um, I do lots and lots of fun things for work, but of all of them, podcasting is easily one of the most fun of all. So I'm very, very lucky to have that. So um, let me uh, just uh, pop this back up here for a second. I wanted to show you something here. And what I wanted to show you is that, oops, here we go. This is not me, but this is exactly how I feel when I am creating a podcast. On a scale of one to 10, the joy is like 25. So uh, I honestly, I honestly, honestly feel that. Like if I'm sitting here recording, even if it's my intros and outros that I add to my podcast, if I'm sitting here recording uh, an interview with a guest, uh, if I'm sitting here planning how I'm going to structure the, each, each episode and put each episode together, I honestly do it with this big smile on my face. I didn't realize for a while that I was doing it, but then I kind of noticed that each time I was sitting down and working on my podcast, this is exactly how I felt. And I thought, wow, that is an amazing thing. I do lots of amazing, really fun things with my work, but to find out that that podcasting brings me so, so much joy, uh, it really made it extra worthwhile. So, you know, beyond being something that I wanted to do for such a long time, it's really, really amazing that I, um, to me, that I feel so good doing it, I think. Um, so <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about how I got to this uh, podcast uh, fun in the first place. So uh, as I mentioned, 
I started my travel blog way back in 2005. I started it accidentally, to be honest, because I was working uh, for um, a school in Germany at the time, teaching English, and on the side I was writing. I'd always loved to write, and I had been writing some magazine articles for some travel magazines. And that was really fun, uh, but it was a lot of work, and you know, you'd often write, uh, write a few ideas down or write even entire articles, and they may or may not get published, and kind of you know, went back and forth with that, thinking, oh, you know, <laughs> this is a really hard way to make some extra dollars, even though it was fun. But uh, one of the editors from a magazine I'd been writing for said, hey, I've got, a, I've got a mate. Actually, he probably said, I've got a pal or a buddy because he was American. I'm Australian, so we say mate. Anyway, he said he had a friend who needed a blogger. And I was like, okay, what's a blogger? I don't really know. But if you think I can do it, okay. And so I began blogging. And uh, after a short time of doing that and loving it, I realized that probably I needed to have my own blog. And so that's where notaballerina.com came about. So it's always been focused on travel, sometimes the travel that I do, sometimes the travel that I dream about, but always what travel can do for us, how much it can benefit us in so many different ways. So that's part of the background journey here. Now, the next bit was listening to podcasts is something that I've done for many years, pretty much as, as long as they've been around. Uh, and as time went on and I moved back to Australia and I got a, a busy uh, a busy life, I had a son, I had my own business, uh, there's you know not many spare moments in my life. I certainly can't sit down and watch hours of TV. But podcasts fit into lots and lots of moments in life. They fit into when I go for a walk for exercise. They fit into when I'm cleaning the kitchen late at night when I really don't want to clean the kitchen, but at least listen to a good podcast inspires me. They fit into all of those um, moments when I'm driving somewhere to meet a client and um, the radio on my car is broken. So what can I do? I can listen to podcasts. It's perfect. So I had long, long been listening to podcasts and wondering Hmm, what can I what can I create how what can I create to add to this space uh, a lot of the travel podcasts that I listened to were kind of destination focused and that didn't really grab me because I thought I uh, I only want to listen to them when I'm going to that place it's not always not always interesting enough that I want to listen to um, you know 45 minutes about one particular destination that I may not get to visit for you know 20 years so I thought about it and I thought about the people that I wanted to talk to and it took me a while to figure out what I wanted because I'm kind of fussy, I suppose. <laughs> but I loved the idea of having more than one guest in each episode. Uh, I know that sounds like a hassle and it sort of is in a way, but I think it's worth it um, because I always thought that it's nice when you are listening to a podcast and you love the guest, but it's not nice when you listen to a podcast and you just, for whatever reason, don't really click with that guest and you don't want to listen to a whole episode of just that person. I always thought that's kind of a risk and sometimes that would turn me off a podcast, um, you know, for quite some episodes just because I didn't like one particular guest, uh, which is not really fair, but, you know, that's life, you know, so many podcasts, so little listening time. So in the end, what I did is for the Thoughtful Travel podcast, I have a, a structure where each episode we talk about one particular topic. Um, for example, it might be solo travel tips or it might be uh, the benefits of traveling with kids or uh, how to travel with disability and chronic illness. And I tell some of my stories that are relevant to those topics from all the travels I've done. But I also have three, occasionally two, but usually three guests tell one of their stories. Their, each story might last sort of between five and eight minutes or so. Um, so we have three guests, me in between all of them, and we round, end up with a 25 minute or so um, episode of the Thoughtful Travel podcast. Um, it took me ages to decide on a on a format that I was happy to do, but that's worked out and uh, I've had lots of great feedback on it. So I think I'm not alone in thinking that this is uh, an interesting way to deal with the podcast. So I figured it all out finally. And eventually my big goal was to launch by the time I was 40. And I'd got in just in time because the first, I think it was three episodes of the Thoughtful Travel podcast launched on my 40th birthday, which was in March last year. So now we're up to 18 months of the Thoughtful Travel podcast. And I can't imagine it not being in my life. It's so, so, so much fun to do uh, and for so, so many reasons. So as I said before, it just brings me so much joy. And I hope that there's a lot of podcasters out there who recognize that kind of feeling of joy 
and that I'm not alone in feeling um, how much podcasting brings to my life. And uh, if you don't feel quite as crazily joyful as me, then uh, stick around because I'm going to give you some strategies. But before we get to those, I actually uh, hopped on to one of the forums I'm involved with here in Australia uh, during the week and I wanted to know about some other fellow Aussie podcasters and how they felt about the kind of the jo- the main joy that their podcast brought them. And I got some really great responses, some of which I'm going to include today. So the very first, uh, well, I should say that the kinds of topics that they um, mentioned kind of fell into sort of four different categories. I had a few more myself, but perhaps I'm alone in thinking these. Perhaps I'm unusual. Who knows? But in any case, um, the most um, mentioned one was this one, connecting with guests. So let me just uh, give you a couple of examples of what people said. So um, first up, it was Andrew from the AB Film Review. And he said his most favourite thing about his podcast was talking with people from all around the world about a similar interest. I've learned so much about different countries and cultures through podcasting. And I couldn't agree more. It's been such a joy for me to get to speak to people from all around the world who have a a shared interest. And I think that shared interest part is such a key, a key thing when it comes to podcasting uh, is that we are able to, you know, to really niche down into a a small interest area that really, really uh, appeals to us. And thanks to the marvels of the internet, we can also find other people who it appeals to. And I think that um, I've had a similar experience. I've got to speak to people in, uh, I think, I don't know, 16 or 17 different countries so far um, for when I, for people I've interviewed for the podcast. And it's little things that you learn about the different countries and cultures that I find fascinating and it's such a, an added bonus to, uh, to being able to meet and connect with all these guests. So, so I definitely agree with Andrew there. Um, Sam from Human Ordinary, which is a really interesting story about, uh, interesting podcast with personal stories. And he said, getting to meet interesting and different people that I never would have if not for the fact that I'm telling their story and staying in contact with them. Totally agree with this one as well, because I've definitely got to meet some really interesting people, um, both people that I've sought out looking for new and, you know, different kind of guests for my podcast uh, and people who've come to me and said, hey, I've been listening to the Thoughtful Travel podcast. I think I've got something to share. You know, could I hop on as well? And um, Sam's point about staying in contact with them really resonated with me because I've over the years I've been blogging for 12 years so far and I have met online probably hundreds of other of fellow travel bloggers uh, and over the time I've met some of them up met some met up with some of them in person as well but it hasn't been something that's so let me say fast as if you actually speak to someone so you know I get to speak to my guests on a Skype call and the speed with which you become close is so much faster um, compared to just using, you know, email or chatting on social media or whatever it is. But having that voice-to-voice contact, like, you know, I'll talk to my guests for always at least half an hour, sometimes up to an hour, and occasionally we get just carried away and we talk for an hour and a half or two hours because um, they're so excited to be able to speak about what they're speaking about, you know, their travel passion, and and so am I, and we just hit it off, and sometimes it just keeps going and going. Uh, so I think that that building that relationship is so special and I've certainly kept in contact similarly with a number of my guests and I think that's a really special part of podcasting. Very joyous. Uh, and then I heard from Ang Harrod from Lost the Plot and she said, I love interviewing people in the book industry and getting to meet people as excited about books as I am. And I think that's exactly the key, that uh, it's such an amazing thing to actually get to meet people who have that same passion that you do. And the wonderful world of podcasting means that there are people who can find you and you can find them who have whatever niche your your um, passion is, however specialised it is, there are people out there who will find you and you can connect and it's just such a fabulous experience when you do. So, um, for example, in my niche for the Thoughtful Travel podcast, 
uh, you know, of course, a lot of people love to travel, but lots of people just like to go somewhere and sit on the beach and chill out, or they like to go and um, see, you know, all the sites of Europe in one week or whatever. But there's people like me who want to think more about it and who um, feel that travel has really changed my life and, uh, you know, that I have to keep doing it because it's so good for me and so much I can learn from it. And it's really exciting to get to talk to people who feel the same way. At first, I thought I was kind of just weird. And then the more I've run the podcast and the more people I've got to interview for the podcast, then it's proven to me that I'm not alone. Um, I might still be weird, but there's people who are weird with me. And it's um, it's very, very, uh, very, very um uh, encouraging I suppose and makes me want to continue it so so yeah so that was all about the connecting with the guests as being one of the really joyous parts of um, of podcasting and another uh, kind of group of answers that I got uh, were from people who really 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 loved connecting with their listeners and um, I mean <laughs> I agree completely with this as well. But first of all, for example, um, Haley from Head of a Codfish said, my favourite part is when people who have listened take the time to contact me and chat and they get what I'm saying. I don't think that will ever get old. Uh, now you might be wondering what Head of a Codfish is about, as was I when I first saw it. Uh, and um, I'm going to, I don't remember her tagline exactly, but it's about modern family life and, you know, kind of juggling um child care child care with work and all of these uh, modern kind of conundrums um and that's the head of a codfish podcast so i completely get what hayley was saying as well i've listened to a couple of episodes and i completely understand and uh, i see what she means so when listeners people that you've you know otherwise never met don't know anything about and they get in touch and say hey you know i was listening to this episode and you said this and that's exactly what's going on in my life now and I totally get it. And to be able to feel that you've connected with people and kind of understood people at that level I think is a really, really um, special thing to be able to do. Uh, and I've certainly had those kind of situations happen with my podcast as well. Uh, for example, um, I have an episode about travelling with a disability or chronic illness. Now, I'm lucky that I don't have to travel with a disability or a chronic illness, but I know a few people who do or who have kids um, with a disability. And I thought, well, this, you know, this is something I'd love to to know more about. And I got a few people on an episode and it's been one of the most downloaded episodes. And I think that's because people who, you know, who've ended up with um, either themselves or their family members with a disability or a chronic illness, but they still want to travel. Well, they're out there trying to find, you know, kind of, examples of how they can really do that and uh you know do other people do it they don't want to feel they're the only ones trying to do these you know really challenging trips and obviously they've you know found that by listening to my guests and then they've got in touch with me and just had so many lovely things to say about that particular episode and that really really resonates well with me and makes me feel uh, all warm and fuzzy <laughs> i have to say um now, another uh, example was Mick from The Dead Prussian, and he said, engaging with listeners on social media or in person and connecting them with my guests so that the conversation doesn't stop at the end of the episode. I mean, and this is real kind of, you know, life goals for podcasters, surely, that um, to be able to get the right people talking to each other, and it's not just that they listen to an episode and that's it, but to get those connections in place that people can, you know, really benefit from from having those connections and those networks. I think that's a, a pretty special thing as well. And um, lastly in this section was Maria from um, a lovely podcast called Talking with Painters, which does exactly as you'd imagine, and she speaks with Australian painters, um, the artist kinds, not the house painter kinds. And Maria said, um, most of my listeners are artists and many feel isolated in their studios. It's been great getting messages that they feel more connected to the art scene when they listen to the podcast. Uh, and I just love that idea of, um, yeah, art, being an artist can be a lonely existence and to be able to um, listen to a podcast probably while you're in your studio painting, I imagine. Um, I think there'd be plenty of room for podcasts for uh, artists. Uh, and I think to be able to send those messages back to the to the podcaster, in this case, Maria, um, to you know that you feel connected to that whole kind of community 
uh, just through listening to her podcast um, is another great example of uh, of really good joy in podcasting, I think. So um, let me see, where are we? Excuse me, I am, um, as I said, I have this flu and I just need to have a sip of this tea. But just because I'm a travel blogger, you have to see that my uh, favourite uh, teacup or tea mug is here today. And it's uh, got pictures of Iceland on. If you've been to Iceland, put it in the chat box because I need to know because it's one of my favourite destinations. I've only spent, oh, I think it was about 10 days there. It was about 100 days too short, so I have to go back sometime. So I daydream about it every time I have my cup of tea. Now, the next part of some of those great reasons why um, people find so much joy in their podcast is exactly this and this is helping people now I think many many podcast topics are really set up with this whole helping people in mind uh, I mean even mine uh, I have the goal of encouraging people to travel more widely and to get more out of their travels and although travel is, you know, one of those privileged things that not everyone can do and we should feel very grateful that we get to do it, I still think it's worth doing well if you're going to do it. And so helping people is one of my kind of big aims out of uh, out of the Thoughtful Travel podcast. And I'm not alone. So Kate Toon from Recipe for SEO Success, and she also has another podcast, the Hot Copy Podcast, both of which are amazing and I listen to with uh, great interest. And so Kate said, hearing from listeners in far-flung places who say that my podcasts have given them the confidence to tackle their own SEO or search engine optimization. It feels amazing to be in the ears of people all over the world. It makes such a trusting connection. And she's dead right. I think that um, I've already heard it mentioned uh, earlier uh, in talks today that being in the ears of people is such a powerful place to be. Um, and, you know, we should take that responsibility quite seriously, I think. Uh, and uh, I can uh, vouch for Kate's um, messages here myself that she has definitely helped me and I'm sure lots and lots of people. I'm uh, often sending people to listen to her podcast, I have to say. So definitely uh, um, helping people for sure. Uh, now, this is uh, one I just discovered this week after my shout out. So Amy from The Art of Decluttering said that the daily messages and photos I get sent from listeners who tell me that our podcast has literally changed their lives. It's humbling and exciting and makes me want to keep improving to serve our listeners well. Uh, and um, <laughs> I have to share a little secret when we're talking about the art of decluttering. So you can see behind me here this lovely, fairly empty wall and further behind that there's books fairly neatly placed in a bookshelf. Um, a few hours ago, it didn't look like this because I'm in desperate need of the art of decluttering because I'm a very busy person and I have to say that uh, being tidy and neat is just not a priority because, you know, podcasting, for example, is way more fun than tidying up. And uh, my seven-year-old son, who's also not very neat, but somehow decided that uh, this was not good enough, he came in and he could see what my screen, what my video could see and he said, you know, you've got to get rid of this, 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 and need more books there and less books there, and he fixed it all up. So um, thanks, Amy, for the art of decluttering mention. Now I have to uh, get on to some more decluttering. So you're definitely helping people. I guess that's definitely a good thing. So there you go. Now the final kind of part of the final sort of section of reasons that um, the people I chatted with gave for why um, they get so much joy out of their podcasting is this. Telling the stories we want to tell in our way. And I know that that's a really amazing part of podcasting is that we um, quite independently and without, um, without too much interference from outside sources can choose to tell stories, the stories that we really want to tell and the way we want to tell them. I mean, for my in my case, telling stories of fellow travellers in the Thoughtful Travel podcast is one is it I'm doing it in a very specific way because that's exactly how I want to tell the stories. I don't want um, you know a story that's 45 minutes long from one listener from one uh, guest, and I don't want people to tell me about the top 10 things to do in Vancouver, but I want people to tell me about things that have changed their lives on their travels and people they've met who've really impacted on them and and these kind of really I don't know meaningful to me stories and you know that's why I love 
um, running the Thoughtful Travel podcast because I get to tell the stories I want to tell and I want to get to tell them my way with the help of my guests. Uh, so for, as an example of this, Callan from um, Game Train podcast and in his sense of storytelling is seeing how our show has evolved and changed since we first began because it's our podcast and we get to make it our way and you can choose what format you have. You can change the format anytime. You don't even have to stick to the same format every week. You can do it however you want that you think will benefit the listeners the most because it's all up to you. And that's one of the, the really beautiful parts of podcasting, I think. We're lucky to be in this era where, um, you know, it's pretty flexible. We can think about things in our different ways and be creative about it. And uh, um, long may it stay so, I think. Uh, and Glenn of the Stories of You podcast said, I've really enjoyed learning the art of longer form story narrative through audio and giving people a chance to tell really personal stories. And I think that's so powerful. Uh, and of course, as we, uh, as the podcasting community moves towards, you know, a, a lot more of these sort of professionally um, put together longer form stories, uh, I think that this is something that this the creativity of this art will become even stronger and even better because there's so much, so many possibilities and so many really beautiful ways of putting together a story through sound. And uh, um, I think I don't know. Perhaps I'm much more of an audio person than a than a visual person because to me, that's the ultimate way because I can picture things happening in my head. I don't have to um, be distracted by what well the reality looks like if I'm watching something in a in an audio visual form so um I think that's a really wonderful way to uh get to um uh to get through get stories out and get stories you know lots of different stories out into the world so <laughs> all of these people had uh, some great great joys that they had in their podcasting lives and so my question so far and do hop in on the chat and tell me are you as happy as these podcasters? Uh, I'm not going to tell you how just yet, but strategies are coming up soon. <laughs> so that's just a, something to be aware of. So I wanted to just reiterate the main joys that I get out of my podcast because uh, some of them are things that the um, these Aussie podcasters that I mentioned have touched on. And some of the things that are, you know, really just specific to me, are, well, they're undoubtedly not just specific to me. Uh, I'm sure that many of you out there have some of the same situations, so I'd be very keen to hear about them. Um, but first up, speaking with old and new friends. Uh, I've sort of covered, mentioned this briefly, but um, certainly the um, the way that I've been able to get back in touch with all kinds of friends through podcasting has been amazing. So as I mentioned, I've been running my travel blog since 2005. And when I sat down to create my podcast, I went back and thought, okay, um, you know, what kind of guests can I get on first? You know, when it's a brand new podcast, you kind of got to call in some favors and find people who you think you're going to say yes, when they really don't know what they're signing up for, because you don't, you know, you don't have a finished product yet to show them. So I um, went back and thought about some of the people that I've known through blogging and found some of those people to come on, uh, to come on board for the first few episodes. And uh, they were mostly people that I've known for, you know, upwards of nearly a decade or, or sometimes more through my blog. Some of them are whom I've met in person over the years and some I haven't. I live here in Perth, Western Australia. It's one of the most isolated cities in the world. And even though I love to travel, it's not that easy to get uh, around the world and, and meet up with people. It's expensive and it takes a lot of time. So it hasn't uh, always worked out that well. Uh, and yet um, these people that I knew were very willing, thankfully, to be my first uh, guinea pig guests. And I got to speak with them on Skype for, you know, around an hour or so, most of them. And totally reconnect and some of them you know have been you know chatting over the years often just on social media maybe you know over Facebook or you know the occasional email and stuff but um but nothing really significant and then here I was chatting away to them on Skype and really being able to catch up properly 
And that was, you know, that voice, voice contact is just something really different. Obviously, meeting up face to face is the ultimate way. And I really do love the chance to meet up with, um, with both my guests and my listeners as well face to face. But it's not very practical most of the time. And uh, being able to speak over Skype or however you record is just an amazing way to um, to make those those old relationships, you know, um, really solid. And uh, I had so much joy. Like it's one of those real just joyful moments. I'd get off those calls so buzzed and so excited that I'd got to have such a great chat. And not only was it a great catch up chat, like, you know, where are you now? Oh yeah, we're in a co-working space in Colombia. Oh, what are you doing? And, you know, we got to catch up on the, you know, what's going on in life now. But not only that, because of the nature of the podcast, I got to have these, you know, more deep and meaningful chats about uh, about some of their travels as well, and really kind of dig down deep and talk about things that were really important to them and really important to me. And that's the kind of conversation you don't necessarily get to have uh, over, you know, over a meal that you, when you've got together somewhere. Um, it's, you know, something that's a bit deeper and a bit more special and uh, goes beyond the superficial. And it's, just amazing. So <laughs> that's one of my big joys for podcasting. Um, so that was with old friends, but speaking with new friends as well, or well, making new friends. Uh, I th- can think of um, oh, one of the very first guests I had on the podcast was just someone that uh, another guest had recommended, and not even a travel blogger, but was a he's a photographer, um, really cool guy called Keely Keely Yuyan. And he um, works with um, Indigenous cultures a lot. He's actually Indigenous Russian. Um, I learned so much speaking with Keely. And he had you know, all these amazing stories to tell that I never would have dreamt up ever in a million years. And, you know, we became friends just like that because, you know, we got to chat for uh, an hour or so. I think his was one of the ones that went for a bit longer. And if I had just, you know, messaged him and said, oh, can I ask you a couple of questions over email to, you know, want to write a blog post or something, it would have been nothing like the fact that we got to speak voice to voice for all that time. So, uh, and yeah, we've stayed in touch ever since. And that's just one of many, many examples. I've made some amazing new friends uh, from uh, meeting new guests on the podcast. Um, and another thing that's been amazingly joyful is amazing feedback from listeners so honestly that's I guess sometimes that's why you do it right you do it I do you know I podcast for myself of course but I really it's putting out there for the listeners and I really want the listeners to get something really special out of it and uh, some of the feedback I get definitely um, proves to me that uh, that I have um, you know, helped out some listeners and that I've given, certainly, if nothing else, given them something that they've enjoyed listening to, whether it's uh, uh, out gardening, commuting, uh, on planes, all kinds of uh, places that people have listened to me. So I love that. I also find that podcasting is a really pure creative outlet because, as I said before, you can do it however you want. And I think that that's a very unique thing in this day and age. For example, blogging is not as fun as it used to be because there's so much about blogging that you should do. You know, you should make sure you have great search engine optimization. I mean, in a sense, this can apply to podcasting as well, but I just still feel it's a little bit more out there and a bit more creative. Um, you know, you should have an, an, Im- image in, an image in your blog post that's great for Pinterest, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, podcasting, I feel like there's still that space for you know, from beginning to end of your episode, there's some, you know, conventions that are good, but you don't have to necessarily follow any particular formula. uh, And there's a lot more room for creativity. Uh, Now, the next point of one of the most joyous parts of my podcasting experience is, is one that I think we all need to think about is pushing the edge of my comfort zone. So I'm an extrovert and I love talking with people, but weirdly, I hate talking on the phone. And um, podcasting is perilously close to that feeling of talking on the phone. And every time before I record an interview, I'm nervous and I'm thinking, oh, oh will this be okay? Or oh, just oh, there's something, you know, something that just doesn't grab me about that part of it. But every time I do it, it's always amazing. And I get to the end of the call and I'm just so excited and um, and just so smiley. And um, that kind of, you know, 
I don't, I could easily just, if I, st- I could just stop the podcast and not do it because that's always a bit hard every time. But I think that when you're pushing the edge of your comfort zone, then you are improving, you know, improving things so much for yourself. You're, you know, adding new skills to your repertoire, you know, whether it's, whether it's that or even just reaching out to the people that you want to be guests, maybe that's pushing the edge of your comfort zone and you're scared of them saying no and stuff like that. But whatever you're doing that is pushing you beyond the, um, you know, your normal comfortable bounds in life, I think it's a really good thing. Uh, not like in this picture though where the dude is standing on the edge of the cliff. I don't do that. I do not do like crazy adventure sports. So, yeah, don't do that comfort zone pushing and say it's for me because I don't like it. <laughs> um, now, as you can see, the second last thing on my list is um, the joy of being able to talk at length about my passion. So I love to talk, number one. Uh, number two, I love to travel. Number three, combining those things and being able to talk forever and ever about traveling and especially about the bits I really, really love about it. And that's how it changes you. I mean, what better thing? I, you know, I couldn't think of a better way to to do part of my work every week than talking about this at length. It's fabulous. Excuse me. And um, last but definitely not least, <laughs> perhaps because I came to it when I already had um, built uh, many other parts of my business, one of the joys of podcasting is that I've learned to outsource the non-fun bits. So the f- non-fun bits will be different for everyone, but for me, it's the techie side of producing uh, each episode. So uh, I don't do that and I send it off to Queensland to the lovely Lyndall. Hi, Lyndall, if you're listening, I love your work. And I love being able to say, yes, here's the bits, you know, grab this bit and this bit and this bit and put them all together, please, and make it sound good. I don't do that bit. I know that I have the capacity to learn, but I don't really want to. And my uh, lovely um, VA, Lyndall, is way better at it. So I send it off to her and I don't have to do that bit. Um, And I wish I could learn to do that better in the other parts of my business, I have to say, because uh, I think um, outsourcing the non-fun bits is something that whoever can afford to do that, I think, you know, should be paying attention to doing that. I'd be curious to know, actually, you can uh, throw it in the chat if you like, uh, how many other people are um, outsourcing parts of their of their podcasting, or uh, are they um, are you doing all of the bits yourself? But think about have you got some non fun bits that you might want to might want to uh, send off to someone else around the world? So here is the big question: How can you get a piece of podcasting joy? I hope that you're already finding podcasting very joyous or if you haven't yet got a podcast that you're getting some ideas on how to make it really really fun because it definitely um, can be so 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 much fun so my first tip is this go guest crazy (laughs) now I don't mean like go stalk your guests and make the guests think that you're totally nuts so um, not at all I um, don't encourage any kind of stalking please don't. But um, I sat down and I do it sort of every six months or so when I'm kind of thinking again, what other episodes going to be coming up in the future. I sat down and I, or I continue to sit down and I write a list of all of my dream guests. And recently I found the first list that I wrote before I started my podcast. And I had written a list of mm, 30 or 40 guests, I think, people that some of them were people that I knew would say yes or that, you know, would help out if they could because I knew them quite well. And some people were, you know, way almost impossible to me. And I looked at that list and most of the people on that list have already been on the podcast or um, have definitely said that they'd like to in the future. You know, travel travelling people are often hard to find and hard to pin down. You know, they don't know where they're going to be from week to week. But um I was amazed to find how many people on that list had happily said yes. And I think if you've got an interesting enough idea for your podcast and you make it easy enough for your guests to, you know, to book a time with you and all the the boring admin part, um, you might be surprised at how many people say yes. And when when there's people who say no or who kind of ignore my requests, I tend to think that most of those people are, um, and in my experience, there's certainly people I've never heard being guests on other podcasts. I think that those people are just a bit nervous about getting on a podcast, so um, don't take it personally. And of course, there'll be people who are too busy and people who it's just not the right timing for them, etc. But it really never hurts to ask because 
if someone says, yeah, no, thanks. I you know, don't want to be on your podcast now. Really, it's not the end of the world. It's nothing personal. Um, and just go down the next person on the list and ask them and you might be really surprised. Um, I think another useful strategy is getting really creative about how you find guests. So I started off thinking, you know, travel bloggers, they're the people I know, so that's easy. Um, and then uh, someone suggested that first travel photographer. And so I went down a path of finding other um, travel photographers who were interested and had some really interesting guests, um, even had a whole episode just with travel photographers on. Uh, and um, they, I think photographers especially, are really kind of looking out for interesting stories. So they were gr just, all of them have been great guests to have on. And that's kind of one avenue I wouldn't have thought about. Um, another example, I have a friend here in Perth who's a novelist and she was always taking these overseas trips to research for her novels. And I always tease her about it because I think, oh, you're always setting your books in Paris and New York and um, you, you could just set your book in Perth and then you wouldn't have to go anywhere. And, of course, she disagreed completely because she loves the excuse to go places. Uh, but not only that, when I followed her trips, she was going to these, um, you know, really interesting places. Like she was in Paris. She'd hired a guide for the day so that she could get into the, you know, the really um, you know, the places that you might not get to see otherwise as a general tourist. And, and they took her into, a, I think it was a theatre somewhere and there was a person just, I don't know, cleaning up or something and said, oh, well, we can take you into this back room and find out, you know, all of this other stuff. And she had all these amazing stories and it was such an interesting way to travel. And so I said to her, hey, this is, you know, this would make a great story for the podcast. And she said, oh, well, I know this person and this person, some other novelists, because novelists know other novelists. Um, they travel a lot for their, for their books too. So, you know, you could ask them. And I asked them and all of them agreed to be on the podcast. I had to turn it into several episodes. But um, just, yeah, the fact that it's so fascinating to people like me and other people who read novels to listen to what um, novelists do when they travel to research their books. So um, getting creative about the kinds of guests you find uh, and how you find them and, and what you talk to them about that's still related to your topic, I think, is one way to get yeah, a massive, uh, big extra boost of joy into your podcasting. So I know that um, I'm often thinking about other places and other people that I can find. So it's been lots of fun. Now, strategy two, changing up your format. So early on in the session today, I talked about um, how I came to decide on my uh, on the format of the Thoughtful Travel podcast because I didn't want it to be just a straight interview. Uh, I definitely didn't want it to be just me talking because, um, well, I love to talk, but I just didn't think I would be interesting enough or that I had enough stories to tell to create this podcast on my own. Uh, but I didn't want to be just one guest at once because what if people don't love that one guest and so on. Uh, and so I ended up having that multi-guest format tied together by my stories that kind of um, relate to what the guests have talked about. And, uh, you know, in coming to that format, I thought of, you know, a dozen other different kinds of formats that people could use for a podcast. Uh, and, you know, by listening to other podcasts as well, I thought about the bits I liked. You know, I like I like podcasts that have sections in them and I, you know, I, I don't love um, only one guest and, you know, things like that. But whatever appeals to you will probably appeal to your target audience as well. You're probably, you know, you're basically a member of your target audience. So think about your format. And, you know, in the future, I might change my format too. I'm not wedded to it. I love it right now, but it's my podcast and I can do what I want. So I may change it. So this is my strategy too for getting more joy in your podcasting. Change up your format. Um, be ambitious. So don't feel that, you know, that because of, of technological reasons or because of your editing ability or production skills that you could just you can only have just you talking and that's it you know be ambitious if you want to have more guests or you want to do something completely different figure out how you can do it ask someone learn um you know don't let those kinds of restrictions restrict how you um, design the format of your podcast um, also listen to heaps of other podcasts to find out what works for you and listen outside of the areas that you would normally listen to. Uh, for example, when I was preparing for this podcast and I put that shout out out to get all those um, Aussie podcasters and their suggestions, um, some of the podcasts I'd listened to before, but quite a few of them I hadn't and I had a bit of a listen to each of them and 
you know, in diff- they're all from completely different genres and different niches. And I learned so much about, you know, other possibilities for podcasting just by listening to them. So, you know, just listen to a bunch of random things and find out what you like and what you don't like. And also have a think about how storytelling works. And if you listen to some of those amazing, you know, storytelling style podcasts, um, think about what makes them so interesting that you have to you have to keep listening. Um, I think often we don't think enough about that when we're, you know, most of our podcasts are, are factual, they're non-fiction, um, but we are certainly allowed to use kind of the techniques of, of storytelling and of fiction storytelling to make our podcast sound extra interesting. And uh, I think it's a shame that we kind of forget that and just um, stick to the same old format over and over. So that's uh, strategy two. Now, strategy three is something that I um, talk about with lots of my clients and um, uh, in my um, my day job, which is in social media, and I talk to them about this all of the time, and I think it's just as relevant for podcasters as well, and that's to reconnect with your why. So why are you doing all this work? You know, podcasting is not just something you do for five minutes on a Sunday morning. Podcasting takes a lot of work. Uh, and there has to be a really good reason for it. So I think there's two parts of that. I think, why are you personally doing this? What's the real reason for you? So um, for me, for example, podcasting is not the most lucrative part of the different parts I, the different parts of business that I have that kind of put together, you know, put together, create my whole work. Uh, it's um, probably quite low in the list of um, lucrative in terms of financial wealth. Well, it's very low compared to many of the others, but it's so important for me to keep doing it. Um, there's lots of kind of facets that go into my why, but the main why is that I feel really driven to share this message with the world that traveling, um, yes, it's a privilege and yes, it's something fun and something we're lucky to do, but it's also something we can do really intentionally to help ourselves, you know, really develop. And uh, I think, you know, if people have improved themselves, they improve the world. So uh, I think it's such an important thing, along with, you know, getting, encouraging people to meet people from other cultures and other countries and to, um, you know, have quite the idyllic viewpoint that if we all had friends from lots of other countries and religions, then there would be world peace instantly because we would finally understand that everyone's really just the same and everyone's just a person trying to live their lives. So, um, you know, that's my, that's part of my big why. And, you know, also part of, for me, a longer term plan across the rest of my life. So uh, that's the, the why personal. So think about that. Why are you doing this? What's it all about for you? And why does the world need this? I've kind of answered that, um, answered that myself for my podcast. But you know, think about not just why are you doing it for you? What's your personal why? But what's the bigger picture why? You know, why does the world need uh, your podcast? What's it doing? What is your? What can your podcast do that helps the world? Uh, it's okay to think about that. I don't think that we. Uh, need to think uh, that that sounds silly or anything. Um, It's okay. So, excuse me, (coughs) strategy four, Um, connect more with your listeners. So I think this, obviously, when you start a podcast at first, it takes a while before you find kind of the groove in chatting with your listeners better. Um, But certainly over the last 18 months, for me, it's been something that's been a huge source of joy. So for example, um, I've managed to have well, probably at least half a dozen or more now listeners who have come on to the podcast as guests, um, you know, either because we've got chatting uh, over email or on social media and, you know, I've said to them, hey, you know, you've got great stories, Can, would you like to come on the podcast? Or they've approached me themselves and said, oh, you know, love the podcast and I think I would love to be able to talk about X, Y, Z topic and if they're listeners of the podcast already, then I know they really understand the point of it and they really get it. So these have often turned out to be um, the absolutely best guests because they're really, really in tune with what I'm looking for for the podcast. So, um, And that's been just such a wonderful thing to think of that they've turned from listeners who just come across the podcast, you know, somewhere, somehow, uh, listen to some episodes and then uh, ended up being on the episodes themselves. I think um, it's just a great, uh, a great cycle. 
Uh, and I also make sure I chat with my listeners as much as I can. Uh, for example, I have a, a private Facebook group which listeners can um, can ask to join. And that's where we can, you know, kind of get really deep about the topics each week and really pay attention to um, what we um what we're learning from our travels and share stories. And uh, I think it's been so rewarding and um, so much fun to be able to connect with my listeners in that way. Um, and my final strategy for um, bringing more joy into your podcasting is one of those uh, annoying but important parts about um, working smart. So all of the others are uh, uh, all the fun stuff. But I think that without doing the practical stuff as well, then I think, you know, it can all seem like so much work and maybe too much work. So um, I've talked already about the second point on this slide about outsourcing parts of your podcasting if you can. So, of course, um, and of course, you may not need to because you may have all of those talents already. And if so, well done. And I wish that was me. Um, but although I have to say that it is nice to be able to, um, send off parts of it and um, and I know a lot of my um, my fellow podcasters do the same and they uh, outsource that final production of it because there's people who do it all day every day and they're just better at it than we are so nothing wrong with that um, the other thing I always rub it on about to my um, clients is batching so I'm a big believer in batching similar tasks together in other words when I produce my podcast these days and I um tend to, okay, I won't tell a lie. I aim to get four episodes created over in, during one day. And that's, of course, not recording the interviews. That's something that happens uh, as and when it happens because my guests are all over the world. But I um, have those interviews there ready. And then I figure out, uh, you know, how which bits of which guests are going to go together and what are, what are the stories I'm going to tell in between. And then I sit down and record, record, record. And by being ready and, and willing to do that all in one day means that I'm kind of banging that out so much faster than, I mean, even just from the simple thing of setting up the mic every time, uh, you know, got to find the cord from underneath the spaghetti cords on my desk and all of those little things. I only have to do that one time. Plus, I'm really in the zone and recording a few episodes, you know, all in one session just seems so much more productive. Um, similarly, for writing the show notes, do it all at once. Uh, the blog posts that go with the show notes, do them all at once. The images, I create them all in Canva all at once. Uh, and every time, the more I manage to do it once, the faster it goes. You know, I think if I'm just sitting down to create one episode, it'll take me half a day. If I sit down and do four, it can take me, you know, a bit more than half a day and not much more than half a day. So it's funny how uh, how things work like that. So do think about uh, what those things can be, uh, you know, how you can work smart so that it doesn't end up taking all of your spare moments because uh, that does tend to suck the joy from things, doesn't it? So um, that's my uh, main message for you. Go and create your podcast with joy, please, um, because I think, uh, I hope that uh, everyone who wants to create a podcast can do it with a lot of joy. I hope that many of you are already and uh, I hope that these strategies will help you to continue to um, make podcasting a really, really fun thing to do. Well, Amanda, thank you for that. You gave us so many actionable tips. There, there was a couple comments in the uh, uh, chat room that said, loving every moment of the talk. And I, and I have to agree. Great talk indeed. So many great strategies that future podcasters and podcasters right now can revisit this and try and hone their skills and find some different strategies. So I appreciate you sharing all those with us. Oh, I'm very happy to do it. I, yeah, I definitely want everyone to get as much joy out of podcasting as I can. Yeah, absolutely. Well, before we go, uh, let everybody know where they can contact you or where's the best place to find your, your information. Yep. Great. So, um, just in iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts, um, hit up the thoughtful travel podcast, or you can find me uh, at my website, not a ballerina.com. And I'm also very often on Twitter at Amanda Kendall. Well, thank you, Amanda, for taking part in international podcast day, 2017, representing yourself, your podcast and the country of Australia. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you. It was great to be here. Thanks for all your hard work. 
Absolutely. Thank you. And just a real quick shout out to our sponsors, Blueberry, Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, The Messengers, a podcast documentary, and Potable. Uh, make sure you keep using the hashtag International Podcast Day. And for any information related to the event, hit up internationalpodcastday.com. So on behalf of myself, Amanda, and the entire International Podcast Day crew, thank you. And let's keep on celebrating.